This is Mind Your Body, a dance movement therapy perspective on the integration of our emotional, cognitive, physical, and spiritual aspects of our being into one more aware and whole existence. Hello, hello, it's Ori Krug here back with Lasting Love Real Talk. I am just going to share this video into my free Facebook community, The Lasting Love Movement. Join us there or join me here. But if you're not in my group yet, The Lasting Love Movement, I encourage you to join. All right, officially share. So I'm excited for today's real talk because I'm getting, I'm getting official. (laughs) I'm getting real and I'm going to actually show you a map of the brain to answer this first question. And I know sometimes we just like really need to see these things visually to understand why um, talking about your issues isn't working, why trying to have your mind believe, no, like this is healthy love, this is safe love, Um, why that self-talk or the affirmations aren't working because you're um, trying to convince a part of your brain that is completely different from the trauma. So that leads me into question number one. Um, How do I believe the love that my partner shows me, how do I understand that he's not the enemy and that he's not intentionally going to hurt me? This is of course really hard to understand when all of your previous relationships in childhood or previous romantic relationships have all ended in hurt. Um, And all the love that you have gotten in the past has been um, malicious or abusive or ended in abandonment. So yeah, how, how could you believe that even though in your mind intellectually, you know, this person you're with is finally healthy and loving, um, and you know that in your mind, but yet your body and your actions and your behaviors keep pushing them away. So I'm going to go straight to sharing my screen here um, and show you why it's, there's no amount of words that I can tell you right now on this video that's going to convince you just like there's no amount of words that you can say to yourself in your head through affirmations, through journaling, through inspirational quotes, through love and light, right? All that stuff. There's no amount of words that is going to convince you until your uh, nervous system and the right part of your brain, the correct part of your brain is um, really believes this and really understands this. So I feel like I'm, I'm just going to stop talking right here and show you. Um, So give me a moment. I'm going to share my screen here and I might mess this up, but I think, yeah. Let me know if you can see the image of the brain. And while you confirm with me, I'm going to see if that's actually showing up. Yes. All right. Sorry. I'm excited because I tend to make things weird with technology. All right, so here is a map of your brain. Now, the three parts that I'm gonna talk about are the prefrontal cortex, the amygdala, and the hippocampus. Now, the prefrontal frontal cortex is our higher functioning part of our brain where we make decisions, we rationalize things, we plan, behaviors. We plan what we're going to say next in our relationship to make it better. Um, And it's the exact part of your brain that's going, okay, no, like my partner isn't my father who is abusive. I know my partner is loving and safe. Um, I know that he's not trying to hurt me. So the next time that he seems like he might get upset with me, um, I'm going to just stay calm and I'm not going to freeze up. I'm going to stay in the moment and, and, and stay with him, with him, with her, whoever your partner is, whoever your partner identifies with. So your prefrontal cortex is doing all of that. The problem is that is the same part of your brain that goes offline when your trauma occurred and when your trauma is getting re-triggered in the moment. So this means that you're doing all this planning, you're doing all of this affirmation, you're saying, I'm, I'm safe, I'm good now, I'm, I'm healthy, I'm in a healthy relationship, my partner isn't out to get me, my partner isn't going to hurt me, my partner really does love me. You're doing all of that in the prefrontal cor- cortex of your brain, and yet when you get triggered in your relationship, that 
entire part of your brain goes offline. So all this planning you did, all the words that you said, they don't matter. They go right out the window. Um, and it's really frustrating because it's like you, you spent this effort, you maybe have spent years and decades in therapy talking about this. You may have all the awareness in your mind about what's wrong, what, how it's connected to your past trauma and what you need to do differently today to really enjoy and thrive in your relationship without sabotaging it. But how could you, like, how could, how could this actually happen if this part of your brain is going offline every time you get triggered by another, uh, by your trauma. And, and this is the exact reason why your trauma isn't stored in words. You cannot access this trauma in words. You can have insightful experiences and aha moments in therapy, um, in talk therapy, in CBT, in DBT, even, you know, EMDR, where you're, you're having these realizations and you can verbalize these realizations. They actually feel really good in the moment to have this insight, but you're still not accessing the bulk of your trauma that is stored in your body, which brings us down to the amygdala. Um, the amygdala is the part of your brain that detects fear and activates your, your fight and flight responses. Um, of course, this is hyperactive in trauma survivors. This is what makes you jump the moment your partner sneaks up behind you to give you a hug and your, your amygdala, amygdala is all of a sudden processing within less than a second that someone's going to like, this person's going to hurt me. Um, I'm about to get attacked, right? Because they're coming from behind. And even though it's a loving gesture, your survival, your, your survival response, your fear center, your amygdala immediately reacts as if it's something that's going to hurt you. Um, the amygdala is also the part of the brain that creates a connection between your trauma and the emotions you experience at the time of the event. And to heal from trauma, your body needs to process past triggers to reduce their intensity. And this is the part of the, this is the part of the brain that is fighting. Like your amygdala is constantly fighting with your prefrontal cortex, right? Prefrontal cortex says, my partner is safe. My partner won't hurt me. The amygdala says, I'm about to get really hurt. I'm getting, this is not safe. This is life-threatening. This is dangerous, right? My partner left their socks on the floor and all of a sudden I'm out the door. <laughs> That's really weird. I didn't mean to rhyme, but right. It's like my partner left the socks on the floor and all of a sudden your amygdala is triggered. Your fear center is activated. They don't care about me. I've asked them a million times. They're not listening. I have to leave this relationship. This is, this is not right. This is not right for me. And your amygdala takes over, hijacks your body to which your body then creates the behavior of getting in your car and driving away. The other thing that's important to note is that your hippocampus is, is a really important part of this. Your hippocampus is the part of your brain that distinguishes the past and present. So your prefrontal cortex can go on all day, every day, journaling, saying these things. Right now I'm here in this present moment, right? We hear so much like, just let, like tell yourself, tell yourself that you're here and that you're safe. And it's like, oh, please. <laughs> like when I was going through my own trauma and and hearing this advice, I was like, if one more person tells me this, I might punch them in the face because I don't need to hear that anymore. I don't need to hear that I need to say I'm safe now. Your prefrontal cortex is saying I'm safe now. I'm, is, you know, my partner is not my abusive past partner, but your hippocampus cannot distinguish that. Like your brain literally cannot distinguish that a weird look from your partner is means that you're about to get hit physically or emotionally because that was some somewhere along the lines of the same look that your uh your father gave you before they hurt you your prefrontal cortex can have all the say that it wants but your hippocampus literally shrinks after trauma the volume shrinks um so it's actually not even able or capable of distinguishing the past from present until you resolve your trauma, until you release that trauma. And it makes it feel like the stuff from the past is happening today. 
Um, and that's why talking about every detail of your trauma, telling the same old stories, it just reinforces these negative patterns and memories from the past instead of actively training your nervous system to tolerate and release them. Um, and it is, there is evidence that shows that movement, physical movement will increase the volume of your hippocampus so that your brain actually gets very good at distinguishing past and present. You don't have to continue convincing yourself um, with, with really like your, your brain and body not believing it. Like you just have that skill. You're rewired to respond instead of react to old triggers. So um, again, the part of you that wants to believe that says, I, I want to believe is here. Well, actually it's here. Um, and yet these parts of your brain are taking over because there's unresolved trauma in your body. So let me stop sharing that. So I, I'm here and I, I do hope that like my message gets through mostly because I wish I heard this many years ago when I almost pushed away my husband forever. Well, he wasn't my husband back then, but when I pushed away my partner and because I've seen the amazing transformation that all of our clients have gone through, through my Let Love In program, that over and over again, when I, you may have seen some of my video interviews with our, with our clients, like they will tell you there are no amount of words that would have ever helped me understand this and feel this, it needed to be done in my body. Um, there have been a, one of my clients, one of my former clients, Jess, she said, uh, even after 20 years, over 20 years of mindset work, of energy work, none of this would have clicked in until I did this through my body, until I did this through movement. Because you can see the part of your brain that talks, that has the verbal part, is not storing your trauma. Your body is storing your trauma. And the only way that you can access and release it is through the language of your body. And the language of your body is movement. So why continue to think over and over again, right? These thoughts and how do I do this? How do I believe it? Um, what can I tell myself? What can I write in my journal? What can I say? It just keeps you stuck in your trauma more and more. It doesn't, it's not even activating the part of the brain and your body that needs to be accessed to actually create these shifts and actually let in your partner's love and, and allow yourself, not just allow yourself, but to really feel that you are worthy of this love so you can take it in. And that is, um, you know, that really leads me to question number two. Um, a client who just signed up for Let Love In asked this question and she asked, will chronic, I'm looking at this on my phone now, will chronic looping thoughts and irrational worry about the strength of your relationship reduce once you go through dance therapy to release the old trauma? Now, um, I think it's interesting that you um, have asked this even after you signed up because what happens is if you go back to this image of the brain, maybe I should go back to the image of the brain here. Remember the prefrontal cortex, that's where all these looping thoughts are happening. That's where all of these, um, these worries are happening. I mean, really the worries are embedded in your nervous system and body, but like it's coming out as thoughts, right? The words of your worries, like what if I'm never, what if I'm never going to be able to um, have a healthy relationship? What if I'm never, you know, what if my partner really doesn't love me? What if I do this program and, um, and my partner still, and, you know, what if I do this program and I'm still not believing that I'm worthy? Like it just goes on and on and on and there's really no end. And that is, that is a very smart defense mechanism that you have developed over the years. Because whether you've been through physical trauma or emotional trauma, your body is the vehicle for which you um, store that trauma, absorb it, hold it. And so if you 
could find a way to disconnect from your body, to dissociate from all of that, which you're holding and storing and repressing, wouldn't that be a great defense mechanism against feeling pain? So your body is actually being very smart by having these looping thoughts, even though, even though you're very uncomfortable with it and you don't like it and you don't want anymore, that discomfort is still to your nervous system safer than being in your body, safer than rewiring and actually feeling this lasting shift of not having thoughts anymore, not having those constant worries and actually like being present and feeling good. And yeah, like just being in your body because being in your body, again, whether it's been physical abuse or uh, emotional abuse that you've experienced, your nervous system is doing whatever it takes to not be there your nervous system is like, nope, that's dangerous. That's life-threatening to be in my body. I know what happened the last time I was in my body. I got hurt. I got really hurt. I was abandoned. I was betrayed. And so these thoughts and the constant energy and attention up here helps you disconnect from your body, helps you dissociate because at least that's safer than being here where I have felt all my hurt. And so it's a smart coping mechanism but you don't need it anymore, right? I forgot this graph was up, right? All the energy that is is happening, it's keeping you in your prefrontal cortex of your brain. It's, It's allowing you to avoid being in your body, which is just exactly where you need to come home into safely and gently to release your trauma and rewire your nervous system. And yes, dance therapy will absolutely help you do that. Um, It will help you do that if you are ready for it. Now, um, the person who asked this question is so ready for it. You are so ready for it. Um, And I believe that's why you are doing it and you are stepping into it. Um, And whoever is listening, you are ready for it. If you are tired of talking and you're tired of these irrational thoughts and you have this amazing awareness in your mind but you know that you need to do that. Like, you know, you need to integrate all of that awareness into your body. You need to um, really start breaking those patterns and step into your new way of being through, um, through connecting back into your body and through movement. And the reason dance therapy works is because first of all, it's not just dance therapy works. It's, you can't expect any modality to heal you. Um, dance therapy will not cure you or save you or whatever. It's a co-created process with a dance therapist who is skilled in helping you release that trauma from your body. So what that means is you can't just expect dance therapy to heal you. When you enter into a process of dance therapy with a therapist who understands how to help you release your trauma and rewire your nervous system, that's when it works. And it's a co-created process because as you start moving, as you start connecting into your body in the safe context of a therapeutic relationship with a dance therapist, everything now has a chance to shift because moving your body, even in a gentle, safe way, will stir up old trauma memories because you've been doing all this You've been putting all this energy and repressing that, right? By being in your thoughts. So when we stop that, when we actually start coming into our body, it will inevitably stir up old trauma memories and old feelings. But instead of you dissociating, disconnecting, um, getting really anxious, blowing up, exploding, whatever you do, when you feel your trauma getting triggered in your relationship on a daily basis, instead of all of that dysfunctional pattern happening, we help you to stay present and regulated, not only in your body, but also in the therapeutic relationship so that you're not just repeating the same unhealthy pattern. You're staying present, even through the discomfort, even through the fear, like your body is feeling that fear coming up, rising up, and you're used to running away, getting in the car, leaving, Um, or attacking or just totally freezing up. But we break that pattern right on the spot because we help you stay present and regulate your nervous system instead of doing all those things that are actually pushing your partner away. And the thing about dance therapy that no other modality has 
not even somatic experiencing, not even other somatic kinds of therapies is that we actually do use movement and dance as a part of, um, to help you step into your new way of being. You can talk all day long, right? About, oh, I wanna be more open and more confident and take up space, right? Well, you can actually say it like this, right? But until your body knows how to do that comfortably without freezing, without reacting, without getting hijacked by fear, you will not be able to follow through with that behavior. You need to be able to learn these new physical patterns in your body first, safely in the therapeutic relationship first, so that you can seamlessly, really, it is seamless, seamlessly do that in your relationship so that you're not constantly going through the loop of, all right, we're in couples therapy and I'm telling my partner here, okay, the next time I get upset with you, I'm going to just... I'm going to stay open and I'm not going to, I'm not going to block you. I'm not going to shut you out. Um, and so you say that in therapy and couples counseling, and the next time you're shutting them out. But if your body knows how to stay calm and stay open and stay softened through those difficult moments, then you already know how to do it. You already become your new normal in session first. So that is why dance therapy works. And that's why, again, let me be clear, it's not dance therapy will heal you. You can't expect that of any modality, but dance therapy with me, my team and I through my Let Love In program, it works because we are, we have almost 30 years combined experience as board certified dance movement therapists and as therapists who have been working with people who've had, honestly, hmm, I don't want to say that. There's no, I don't want to say that I was going to say more trauma, but like, why would I compare that? We're that just unvalidates everyone's experiences. So let me take that back. We have worked in psychiatric hospitals where people are literally on their last thread of life. They are so, so fragile. Um, and we have years, many years of doing group work, individual work with people who are on their last threads of life. So not to discount your trauma or the severity or the intensity of your triggers and how that's coming up in your relationship, but like, we got you, we know how to keep this safe for you and to make this an amazing transformational experience. If you take the leap, if you create the space and time to co-create that transformation with us. So on that note, if you are interested in joining my Let Love In program, it's by application only. Um, so we really do only invite and accept those who are ready. You can submit an application through my website or you can just directly PM me now um, or whenever you're ready if you're interested in doing the program and um, finding out more details. So let me know, we would love to help you uh, heal your trauma, rewire your nervous system, and truly let love in without sabotaging your relationship. And wherever you are in the journey, whether you want to just join my free group, The Lasting Love Movement, or you're ready to jump into my program, Let Love In, um, I just, I hope you know that you deserve to be able to let healthy, lasting love in for good. Thanks for joining me. I will see you next time.